Jerusalem is sacred to all Jews, Christians, and Muslims. It houses the temple built by Hazrat Suleiman, which served as the Qibla for the prophets of Bani Israel, and their history is intertwined with this city. Jerusalem is also the birthplace of Hazrat Jesus and was a central location for his teachings. Before the change of the Qibla, Muslims used to pray facing it. Beit al maqdis is situated on hills, and one of these hills is known as Mount Zion, where you can find the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock. It is noteworthy that the term, Mount Zion, is also associated with the establishment of the global Jewish movement known as Zionism. In ancient history, Hazrat Ibrahim, peace be upon him, and his nephew Lot, peace be upon him, initially migrated from Iraq to Beit al maqdis In 620 AD, the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, reached Beit al maqdis from Mecca, guided by Jibril Amin, and subsequently ascended to heaven. Hazrat Yaqub, peace be upon him, established the foundation of Masjid Beit al maqdis Masjid al-Aqsa, based on divine revelation, leading to the settlement of Beit al maqdis Subsequently, under the orders of Hazrat Suleiman in 961 BC, the mosque and the city were built and renovated. This is the reason why the Jews refer to the Beit al maqdis Mosque as the Temple of Suleimani. The Suleimani Temple and Beit al maqdis were destroyed by the Babylonian King Bak Nasser in 586 BC, leading to the enslavement of 100,000 Jews who were taken with him to Iraq. During the destruction of Beit al maqdis Hazrat Uzair, peace be upon him, passed by, finding the city deserted and wondering whether it would ever be inhabited again. In response, Allah caused him to die, and when he was resurrected after a hundred years, he was astonished to see that Beit al maqdis had once again become a prosperous and thriving city. After Bak Nasser in 539 BC, the Persian emperor Rosh Kabir, Cyrus the Great, conquered Babylon and permitted the Israelites to return to Palestine. During the reign of the Jewish ruler Herod the Great, the Jews reconstructed the city of Bethlehem and the Temple of Solomon. The second calamity befell Jerusalem during the Roman era when the Roman general Titus demolished both Jerusalem and the Temple of Solomon in 70 AD. In 137 BC, the Roman Emperor Hadrian expelled the Jews from Jerusalem and Palestine. In the 4th century AD, the Romans embraced Christianity and constructed a church in Jerusalem. In Islamic history, when the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, reached Beit al maqdis on his journey to the Ascension, it served as the Qibla for Muslims until 624 AH. Even the Kaaba in Mecca was designated as the Qibla by divine command. In 17 AH, which corresponds to 639 AD, during the Faruqi era, Muslims gained control of Beit al maqdis through an agreement with the Christians. The construction of the Al-Aqsa Mosque took place here during the reign of Caliph Abd al-Malik, and the Dome of the Rock was erected on the Marriage Rock. During the First Crusade in 1099, European crusaders captured Jerusalem and martyred 70,000 Muslims. In 1187, Sultan Saladin Ayyubi liberated Jerusalem from the Christians. In modern history and the Jewish occupation, during World War I in December 1917, the British took control of Jerusalem and Palestine, granting permission for Jewish settlement. In November 1947, under a collaboration between Jews and Christians, the United Nations General Assembly divided Palestine between Arabs and Jews. When the Jews declared the establishment of Israel on May 14, 1948, it triggered the First Arab-Israeli War. In the aftermath of this conflict, Israel occupied 78% of Palestinian territory, while East Jerusalem, Beit al maqdis and the West Bank came under Jordanian control. During the Third Arab-Israeli War in June 1967, the Israelis gained control over the remaining Palestinian territories, including Jerusalem. Consequently, the Muslims' original Qibla remains under Jewish control. According to the Jewish perspective, a section of the Temple of Suleimani's Wall, where Jewish pilgrims have mourned for 2,000 years, remains intact and is known as the Weeping Wall. 
Presently, there are plans within the Jewish community to build a temple on the grounds of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Israel has also declared Jerusalem as its capital. Al-Aqsa Mosque Al-Aqsa Mosque holds significance as the first Qibla of Muslims and ranks as the third holiest site, following the Kaaba and the Prophet's Mosque. Local Muslims refer to it as Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa or Al-Haram Al-Qudsi Al-Sharif. Situated in East Jerusalem, an area currently under Israeli occupation, it stands as the largest mosque in Jerusalem, accommodating up to 5,000 worshippers, with the mosque's courtyard capable of hosting thousands more. Since the onset of the Al-Aqsa Intifada in 2000, access for non-Muslims has been restricted. Hazrat Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, arrived here from Masjid Haram during the ascension. After leading the prayers of all the prophets in Al-Aqsa Mosque, he set off on a journey through the seven heavens alongside Barak. The Al-Aqsa Mosque is the first Qibla for Muslims, and for approximately 16 to 17 months after the Miraj, Muslims were obligated to pray while facing Al-Aqsa Mosque. Muslim Constructions When Muslims conquered Bayt al-Maqdis during the reign of Hazrat Umar Farooq, Hazrat Umar, as he left the city, ordered the construction of a mosque near the place where the rock and barrack were tethered. It was here that he had offered prayers alongside his companions. Later, this mosque came to be known as the Al-Aqsa Mosque, as the initial reference to this place as Al-Aqsa Mosque can be found in the beginning of Surah Bani Israel in the Holy Quran. During this period, many companions settled in Beit al maqdis with the goal of propagating Islam and spreading the faith. Caliph Abd al-Malik bin Marwan initiated the construction of the Al-Aqsa Mosque, and Caliph Walid bin Abd al-Malik completed its construction and carried out renovations. Abbasid Caliph Abu Jafar Mansur also undertook repairs on this mosque. Following the First Crusade, when Christians seized control of Beit al-Maqdis, they made substantial alterations to the Al-Aqsa Mosque. They constructed multiple living quarters within the mosque and referred to it as the Temple of Solomon. Additionally, several other structures were added for use as almshouses and granaries. A church was built both inside and alongside the mosque. After the conquest of Bayt al-Maqdis in 1187, Sultan Salah al-Din Ayyubi purged the Al-Aqsa Mosque of all Christian influences and embarked on the reconstruction of the Mirab and the mosque. The Al-Aqsa Mosque is the name of the entire mosque that was constructed by Suleiman, peace be upon him. Some individuals have begun referring to the mosque or prayer place built by Umar bin Khattab, R.A., adjacent to it as Aqsa. However, it is important to note that praying in this place, which was erected by Umar bin al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, is considered more virtuous than praying in other parts of the mosque. Bayt al maqdis Tragedy on August 21, 1969, an Australian Jew named Dennis Michael Rohan set fire to the first Qibla, which resulted in the Al-Aqsa Mosque being consumed by fire for three hours. A significant portion of the Ain Qibla on the southeast side collapsed. The Minbar in the Mirab, which had been installed by Saladin Ayyubi after the conquest of Beit al-Maqdis, was also destroyed. Saladin had engaged in approximately 16 wars to liberate the first Qibla, and after each victory, he would transport this minbar to install it in the mosque. Following this tragic incident, the Muslim Ummah, which had been in a state of slumber, briefly awakened. Approximately a week after the tragedy, the Islamic countries formed the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, OIC. However, this organization, consisting of 56 Islamic countries, became inactive after the second meeting held in Lahore, Pakistan in 1973. The Jews regard this mosque as a place of worship constructed on the site of the Temple of Solomon and aspire to dismantle it in order to rebuild the Temple of Solomon. However, they have never been able to substantiate their claim through convincing arguments that the Temple of Solomon was indeed situated at this location.